What's up, everybody? We're back on the saddle from, you know, eight hours of time difference. This is our first official podcast recorded in different countries, which is crazy. And we'll talk on that a little bit more as our one year, uh, our one year just passed. And we'll give you a little bit of checkup in that episode. But uh, welcome back. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit odd to be doing this when it's early in the morning for me and late at night for you, but first international podcasts are in the books, which is great. Yeah, and uh, I know even if it's early morning for you or late night for me, we both have you know a similar interest in watching um, anime or just catching something on Netflix, and we both have been really into Attack on Titan. I mean, there's a ton of anime shows that we'll get into, um, but... That's what we're going to be talking about today and just kind of bringing you into that world of anime and maybe getting rid of some of the anime stereotypes as we go about this. Yeah, and I feel like um, from my perspective, anime has flourished culturally, especially over in America. Now that people are adopting it a lot, I mean, you see celebrities like Michael B. Jordan, um, you know, showing explicitly and being outwardly, you know, open that they're anime fans and other people. And so I feel like this is uh, the time in, you know, the anime renaissance almost, dare I say. Yeah, yeah. And uh, before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Matt. Matt, you know who you are. You're, he's probably the biggest anime fan I know and I always anytime I'm around him or talk to him I learn something crazy or different from Matt and that's because Matt reads um, what they call mangas or mangas yeah and manga basically is the uh, written form of the anime and so they'll write out the characters write out the frames almost like a comic book compared to anime is the video interpretation of such yeah, very similar to the U.S. culture, right? You'll get um, some people will write the books and then the books will turn into TV shows or movies or some people will, you know, do a TV show or movie and it'll become a book. And that's kind of similar to the relationship between mangas and anime and where some people get their information from. And, you know, some of these mangas are more like comic books. So your superhero, you know, Batman and Superman, which we see stateside, you'll get a lot more anime, you know, staple characters and issues coming out weekly. Yeah, exactly. And so what kind of the big players, one of the big players that you guys might have heard of if you're in the anime or the manga scene is, uh, you know, like Weekly Shonen Jump, where you'll see a, a good chunk of uh, animes be featured and, you know, things like the most, the majority of the popular ones would be published on Shonen Jump. Yeah. And then when you kind of get into this world, this different culture, um, it's very similar to, you know, what the U.S. culture is used to. But, you know, anime is, you know, the birthplace was in Japan. Its early works can be found as early as 1917. And it's very similar. The only difference is that the kind of your character or your audience base, so your audience base, you know, for cartoons in America is a very young age. But over in Japan, anime, even though it is in, you know, Japanese animation, it is applicable to all ages and all ages kind of continue to watch it. Absolutely. And you can see kind of how Japan has its taste or like, you know, influence on the anime that they create that they bring over here in the fact of, you know, what do the characters look like? The majority of the time they have, you know, smaller noses and bigger, rounder eyes um and just kind of are more uh i don't know how to describe it they're more vivacious in the fact of you know there's interesting idiosyncrasies and characteristics about them yeah and i think it's that's the, the first thing that jumps out to people when they say anime they're like or see anime they're like man that's mad different like i'm not used to seeing this type of animation or this type of character and like you know i'm not don't know if i'm comfortable with it or their moves are too sharp and stuff but like that's kind of what personally attracted me to, you know, the anime scenes. So it's, it's just different, right? Being born in America and used to like, granted, my favorite cartoon is going to be Scooby-Doo. But Scooby-Doo compared to, you know, One Punch Man or um, Attack on Titan or like Full Metal Alchemist is going to be very different. Um, and it's just nice to have that switch up instead or that switch up of style. So it's not a whole like cohesive worldwide thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like that's the true beauty of anime is that there is something for everyone. There's anime, like you mentioned, as far as Full Metal Alchemist or um, things like that, where they're like a very adventure and like Naruto, obviously Dragon Ball Z are some popular ones. But then you have the anime where, you know, there's like the cooking shows where basically they have cook offs and stuff like that. And there is literally an anime for everyone, which I think is absolutely beautiful. And that's not just counting the actual animes of the series, but also movies that they create as well. Yeah, and I think that's a thing people don't understand. I think the first stereotype people get is um, kind of the the genre of anime is called ecchi, which basically translate to like the pervert, like weird hentai, like, oh, they over-sexualize women or it's like over-sexualized this way and everyone kind of gets a bad rep gives it a bad rap from that but it's very it's the exact same as american culture like you're going to have a huge variety of genres and subgenres going on and you'll be able to find something you enjoy it's just like you have to find it you're not going to be able to just like pick one and it's going to be the right genre for you yeah exactly and another thing too that people i would say should keep an account when they're watching anime or getting into it is you know, a lot of these popular animes, um, they who have like, you know, just huge follower base and super loyal. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get into the story as well. And I think that's just happens to be kind of the way of the, you know, the Japanese animation or star- storytelling, how, you know, it, it's, they really like to set the scene and make sure that you kind of have a cohesive feel for a lot of um, characters and then things start to happen in some cases. But in other cases, like we were talking about, it's just like pure action. And, you know, you're, you're okay with it. But that goes back into the point of, you know, there's an anime for everyone. Yeah. And I think the, the other thing you have to take into account with, you know, looking at different animes. And I'm sorry if, you know, you're a hardcore anime fan and you're listening to this and we aren't being very specific. There's just like covering the base of anime can be tough and like trying to describe, you know, bleach from dragon ball z from full metal alchemist there's going to be a lot a huge variation i mean it's like comparing the gilmore girls to um american what is it american horror story or something like that I mean, it's like you're just picking a genre and trying to compare complete opposites to make an example yeah exactly and i think that's the most fun part about it because you know you have animes for everything you'd like and so julian i'm curious what are some of your favorite animes uh i really liked one punch man i really liked attack on titan um i've caught a few i wouldn't say i've watched all episodes of dragon ball z but like in our genre growing up dragon ball z was you know i I would say one of the first popularized american side animes along with like pokemon so i was a big dbz guy gotcha Yeah, I feel like DBZ, at least that's for me, that was my gateway anime, to be honest. And I remember watching it as a kid, not even knowing it was true anime. I thought it was just another cartoon. And then revisiting it back when I was about a teenager or so, ended up watching all the episodes. And that's kind of how I started my true anime, like, you know, flourishing and like growth. Yeah. And that's kind of where it will play into. There's different audiences in anime. So you'll have... You know, the shonen, which is basically like males first for males under the age of 15 is kind of like the shonen audience. And then you'll have the shoujo audience, which is like young girls. And then the sang, sorry if I bur- butcher this, but it's like seinen, seinen, which is like the age range of 15 to 24. And then the jose, which is adult woman. And here's another one for you guys. Kodo Mama Uke, which is children. So there's all these different age ranges that you can place, you know, these animes in similar to U.S. culture. Um, but I find it interesting that it just like, even though people watch in all ages, these audiences just stop at like 24, 24 year old. You got to go get a job and you can't watch anime anymore. Yeah. And one thing I do want to reference is don't ever say that about my mama again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah i mean it's just truly it's just uh it's very interesting i mean and i think it's telling about what kind of the japanese culture is like when consuming anime how you know at 15 to 24 what do you do when you're you know a 25 year old man 
uh, I guess, not, not anime in their, you know, the Japanese cultural eyes. Yeah, exactly. And when you kind of look um, at like anime, the very the thing that is hard for me to explain to people is like, I feel like anime just has a lot more emotion put into the storyline than what you typically see on um, U.S. television. And that may be because, you know, U.S. television just kind of tries to pump out as much content as possible. And like these kind of anime, some of them take a tremendous amount of time to build out the season and, you know, come out with a follow up season. And so they, you know, are refining the craft a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like, too, another thing to think about is that a lot of these animes, when they come over here, some of them are watered down and the ideals are a little bit adulterated in the fact of um, my experience with Dragon Ball Z, when I watched all of the episodes and when I was in the beginning of college from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z to Dragon Ball uh i'm i'm it's it's escaping me and i don't believe it's super but basically or dragon ball gt basically the ideas in dragon ball uh, that were very kiddie like when i was watching them as a child are actually very adult when it comes to the actual anime itself so it's interesting to see you know the ideas that japanese culture uses and how it's delivered to the majority of the american audience um, through kind of this odd filter. Yeah, and that kind of makes me think of something in the anime world. So you'll get, if you watch it on Netflix or if you watch it on Crunchyroll or you have, you know, you're just getting it illegally off the internet. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Um, there's two, like, as being an American, you get, like, the authentic with, like, subti- English subtitles, and then you get lip-dubbed. And my personal opinion is if you watch an anime and you have the english subtitles don't ever go to lip dub like i tried that a couple times like going to back to watching seasons and lip dubbing just ruined like all emotion for me i don't know if it was because like you know their voice acting doesn't fit you know how you perceive in your head but it was just like an awful experience for me yeah absolutely it's kind of odd because you also kind of attach yourself you know There is a certain way that you believe the main character from One Piece or Naruto or even um, uh, Eren from uh, Attack on Titan. You think there's a certain way that you have in your mind that they talk. And once that you change that up and you change kind of like what they are talking about and almost their character when you switch actors to the, you know, the English actor and also you kind of switch uh so to speak the lines that they say it changes a lot of stuff in the anime and how like characters work and the dynamics and everything so it's a different feel not to say that it's any less because it's just different i guess it's probably the same on like you know an american movie i don't know fast and the furious seems to be big over in japan um taking like you know them speaking english with um, Japanese subtitles to like when someone dubs that over in Japanese is probably a completely different experience. Um, putting, you know, a Japanese voice on um, Vin Diesel or The Rock um, or Tyrese, like what that's really like. Yeah, absolutely. It almost it's like a voice dissonance <laughs> almost where, you know, the person that has the voice shouldn't be having that voice or the, you know, the person themselves, the, the voice is off for them. Yeah. And I guess bringing it back into that Jap- Japan anime scene, one thing I found interesting when kind of looking into some of the, the little details about uh, some of these episodes or some of these series is one series had 7,000 542 plus episodes and is still being produced. So it started being produced in 1969. It's called Saze San. Um, I'm not familiar with it, but I mean, it has almost 7,600 episodes, which is nutty. Holy hell. I don't know. Like, you know, I feel like in that amount of time, somebody must have died. So did they just kill off the character? Or, you know, do they just have another guy, like this dude's son, who sounds like him? I have no idea. Uh, step up to the plate. I wonder if it's like, you know, how we have in America, you have like daytime soap operas. I wonder if it's like a daytime, 
you know, anime thing where it's just like on all the time and you can go back and like seeing the, you know, the difference from season two to season, whatever they're on is probably like a huge change. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I would imagine so. Uh, or do they have seasons like that or are they kind of like long streaming and then one season is just this character in a certain region and then the next season is them in a different region, almost like uh, Pokemon. And now that Pokemon's still being produced, yeah, so. obviously the 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 actor or the voice actor who played Ash Ketchum isn't there anymore, but, you know, they're just in a different spot, almost new Pokemon, different region. Yeah, and I think that's another good point is, like, um, seeing the evolution of anime from all, like, at least from our eyes being like what we saw the kind of more Americanized, like, yeah, Pokemon or Dragon Ball Z, Yu-Gi-Oh, um, kind of a more Americanized anime style to seeing how those have evolved into like continue on generations. What some of these other animes that we don't necessarily necessarily know about, like, is there like an equivalent of a SpongeBob anime that's, you know, going on for super long or the equivalent of like a, I don't know, a Grey's Anatomy or something like that in that world. I don't know, but there probably is. Yeah, and I think, well, something that you just made me think of that I was, uh, you know, had in my notes before coming into this is that the great thing about anime, too, is that it's not solely just based off of, you know, fiction. Um, some of the things can also be based off of nonfiction. So there's a few anime, I mean, anime seasons and anime movies that are also based off of, you know, real events like, you know, World War II or things like that, which I find interesting that, you know, these things vacillate between very something that, you know, we can hold on to and somebody channeling the world's energy into a ball and throwing it on an alien. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just... Yeah, it's just so interesting. It's uh, unique that you say you bring up World War II because that's kind of when anime started making its way over to America was during World War II. Um, that's when people credit the first modern you know, manga to come over, which was called the Otagi Ma Manga Calendar in 1961 by Osama Tezuku, who also went on to create like Astro Boy, um, which you guys are probably – probably familiar either with the name or seeing seeing astro boy somewhere but it's unique how that spread of you know all these artists and cartoonists after world war ii really started publishing their stuff and it was making its way through trade routes over to um, america and that's when we really started to see it yeah absolutely and you know not to digress too much but i feel like that's so interesting of uh you know war i mean there's some like very horrible and sad things about it and then there's things of uh, idea mixing and the fact of, you know, somebody I'm, I'm sure, or I mean, this could have been a possibility where, uh, you know, a person with an idea from another country interacts with a person from, you know, a totally different background and country and they come up and foster, you know, different opportunities and new thought processes and stuff like that, where, you know, possibly if it wasn't for World War II, which obviously, you know, mm -hmm is not good but you know what came of it now look what we have yeah and it's interesting that you look at an event like world war ii that starts you know to kind of push anime over to other countries and then it, obviously not nearly a similar event but the the birth of technology and like social spreading and social sharing has brought you know Japanese animation to a whole nother level, like into mainstream light. Like you see a little bit more memes of it or more like main culture memes. You see, you know, like you have huge platforms like Crunchyroll, which is, I would say, equivalent to the Netflix of, you know, Japanese animation. And there's a few other ones that, that are just continuing to grow and jumping into this main like online world where a lot more people have access to um, these animes and kind of diving into that world. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the beauty of, you know, another idea, thing of idea sharing or people uh, having ease of access when introducing others to their ideas and the fact of, you know, it's 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 a lot harder to gain traction if you can't get your idea out there. 
um, and find your niche truly. But, you know, if you had a work anime, like uh, there's one called working with two exclamation points um, and you had people that were into it, the Internet's the spot to find them. You know, the, the basically the gathering place of all is the Internet which is great. Yeah. And it's very interesting too, because you, I mean, in both mediums of U S cartoons and Japanese animation, you see this evolution of how, you know, technology and computer graphics are um, upping the ante of the quality standards. So it'll be very interesting to see in the future if, you know, some, you know, how realistic cartoons and like CGI is getting, if you start getting really realistic, there probably is, I just haven't seen, but like really realistic CGI based um, Japanese animations that start coming through the pipeline. Yeah. And to be honest, I think you, we would see that first in hentai and then go over to the actual cartoon. And I know that sounds silly, but um, a lot of the things that I truly enjoy. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. That this is coming off a little yeah. weird, but I'm gonna let you finish. Well, okay, great. Well, here, here, this is my premise of everything. I think that put technology is pushed by money, and one of the biggest places to make money is in the porn industry. And so, just like there is VR porn, and now there's VR technology and stuff like that, I think that that is gonna be pushed first. But another thing that I was going to say is that a, a more wholesome thing is that I truly enjoy kind of the um, ability for anime to, you know, it look like a real human being and stuff like that, but also morph and almost blend the lines of, you know, when somebody gets punched in the stomach and their eyes blur out, um, how they can kind of dance on the line of you know, having a nonfiction, like a human being that we all, you know, is in real life, but also characterize them and color them in a way of being almost unreal to kind of paint the picture of exactly what's going yeah, on. Yeah, that's a that's a valid point. I think that's a nice thing about animations and cartoons. You can either, yeah, blur the line or you can make something a little bit more creative and imaginative that you can't do with a, you know, a real human Um I think that's the nice thing in that kind of anime world that they do well, depending on, you know, the series you're watching. Um, but kind of in some of my final words, if I were to give, you know, some anime suggestions, I'm just going to give you what the top rated on IMDb are. Um, there's a good chance if it's top rated, you'll enjoy it or, you know, it's at least a quality production. And those, the four top rated are going to be Full Metal Alchemist, Death Note, Cowboy Bebop and Attack on Titan. Wow. Well, I definitely think Attack on Titan's in the right place. And, um, you know, if these, like my closing arguments, definitely, or, you know, the last things I want to say is that the best things that I've ever watched in my life are happen to be anime. You know, uh, the most awesome uh, TV series that I've ever watched was Naruto, the most exciting. TV series I've ever played eyes on was Attack on Titan and the way that they kind of describe and paint this story um, that I mean, I still don't understand and I've watched every single episode, but it's just uh, give it a shot. If if you're not in anime yet and you're listening to this, I guarantee there's an anime that you'll love. There's so many out there and they're done so well that, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't yeah exactly uh i hope you guys enjoyed this kind of bird's eye view of what anime is as you can tell there's a lot to dive into and a lot to learn about but we try to just give you a basic you know general overview so that you're at least familiar with the area um as always we're on a lot of platforms we really you know appreciate the support uh really thank you for letting us you know hit one year and still kind of love to do this and really starting to hit our stride so go ahead and share this or email this or text it or fax it or do whatever you want with it but we really appreciate your support yeah absolutely thanks guys and you know i think it's just a testament to how great you guys are and you know how much we're enjoying doing this for you guys that we're doing it in different countries now and um you know not slowing down at all until next time Thank you.